This time I'm going to show you how to make this really soft and snuggly cushion cover. And it's using a patchwork technique, but with a raw frayed edge. So it's, it kind of comes up all nice and fluffy and soft when you wash it. You may have seen this design before in quilts, but I thought I'd make it a little bit different for you by turning this into a really simple and quick to make cushion cover. Now, one of the reasons why it is so soft and snuggly is because I've used a flannelette fabric, which is already like a brush cotton. So it's easy to wash, it's breathable, but to turn touch it's just so soft and very very cuddly and all I've used is four different prints of the same range this is art gallery fa fabrics flannel and some of them have the rainbow prints two planes and we've got the check there as well um, so on the back I've done uh, a zip insertion and I've put this to one side because I just wanted it to be I wanted it to disappear into the seam and not spoil the design that I have on the back there now all of your cutting instructions and measurements are going to be in the description box below the video. I've been quite extravagant with this one because I have quilted it with um, wadding or batting on the inside of the layers as well. But if you're making a cushion cover, that's not necessarily an important part. It does make it very soft. It does make it feel very luxurious. But you could cut that little bit out if you didn't want to do that. But if you're going to make this into a quilt, then definitely put some wadding in there and make it feel really sumptuous and luxurious and again, incredibly soft. So really, really simple to make. Have a look at your measurements and everything that you need. And let's get sewing. So I've cut out all of my five inch squares of fabric and my four inch squares of wadding. Now these squares can be any size that you like, as long as your wadding is a half an inch smaller all the way around. That's where the fringing is going to be. And we don't want to see the wadding in the fringing. Then I've put my fabrics together into groups of four. I've got four coordinating fabrics. And you have nine sets of these for the cushion cover size that I'm making. Obviously you can make this bigger if you're making it into a quilt or a baby quilt. Um, or if you wanted to make a bigger cushion, you can either add more squares of this size or you can make the squares bigger. But just make sure that this, again, is half an inch smaller, um, no matter which size you're making. So you can see I've laid mine out in the same order. I would normally lay all nine pieces out, but I thought it'd be easier for you to just see the three rows here. And then I'll go across the rows, and for the first one I'll leave it as it is. For the second one, I'm going to take the front piece to the back. And the third one, I'm going to take the top two pieces to the back. So you can see that's going to alternate the colour that I have on the top. What it'll also do, so that should have been that way, is to alternate the back colour. So if you're going to see the back of this, i.e. if it is going to be a quilt, um, then you get different patches on the back as well. And remember with the back one, if it has a right side, the right side is going to go down. Because then when you turn your quilt over, you've got the right side showing the right way up. So let's just start off with these. So there's my first four sets. Again, top one facing down. This is going to be the inside of a cushion cover, so it's not the most important thing to do that. I'm going to use just a little bit of spray adhesive just in the center to hold these together. That's optional. Don't spray right up to the edges though, because remember we are going to snip into this later on. And then lay the second piece over the top. A little squirt, not too much, again, just in the center. And then my wadding is going to go on here, nice and centrally, with an even border all the way around. So let's just move that across a little bit. That's the beauty of a temporary basting spray. You can move things around. And then a little squirt in the centre. So I just need a, a shake it with the can. And then my next one goes on top. And then finally another little squirt. The next one goes on top. Now I'm going to sew diagonally across each one of these, but I'm not sewing up to the edge. I'm going to start where I can feel the edge of the wadding. And we'll do a cross across the center. And the reason I'm not going up to the edge is that when this is snipped and folded up, I don't want to be unpicking stitches to make a fringe there. So this just makes it a little bit cleaner, I think. So again, a little back stitch. You can draw to mark this if you wanted an exact line, but at this kind of size of square, it's quite easy to just 
eyeball, if you will. Um, to, you can see where the diagonal line is. But again, if you're not too confident, then do, um, do draw a line across each side with some kind of erasable marker pen. So then we're left with this, with lots of little bits of threads that need snipping. I'll get around to doing that later. And that is going to be the back. So then I can carry on with all of the rest of my pieces. You can see that I've already finished the rest of them because we'd be here for hours if I was doing this. Well, I say hours, minutes. Because they don't actually take very long to do. So that's my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now you can rearrange those if you like, but again, if you are going to see the back of this, do be aware that you don't want to see two of the same next to each other on the wrong side. So you can just double check that that works in that way. Let's just snip these threads away. So when you're happy with your arrangement, we're then going to sew these together. Just make sure I've got no little threads. And we're going to sew them kind of wrong sides together. So let me leave those three there, those three there, and we'll start on these three. So wrong sides together, as in this is the top of my cushion cover, and I'm going to sew them together like this. So the raw edges are sticking up. And I'm going to sew with a half an inch seam allowance just down one side here. So you've got quite thick fabric here now. There we go. I'm going to start about half an inch in as well. And just sew straight down. Don't worry about measuring that half an inch in. Just leave a little bit of a gap as you, before you start sewing. So we've got this. That's where the fringe is going to be. And let's add the next one on. And we're going to make these into three rows of three. And then we'll join the rows together. So there's my second row. And the nice thing is you don't have to be too precise with this. Um, some of my edges don't match up perfectly, but it's going to be washed and it's going to be fringed and it's all going to fluff up and it doesn't really matter that things aren't perfect with this one. So it's a great beginner's project as well. I've also got a little crease in the fabric there. That doesn't matter either, because you won't see that when it's fringed. So that's how we're looking from the front. That's how we're looking from the back. Now, if I was making this into a quilt, I'd snip all the way around the edge and I'd snip into the fringe here as well. But this is going to be a cushion cover and I want to leave the fringing around the edge until I've finished. So I'm just going to snip all of the center pieces. You could leave that till the end if you wanted to, but I just thought I'd show you how we do this. So you'll need a very sharp pair of scissors and sometimes even with the sharpest pair of scissors, this is a lot of fabric to cut through and even my scissors won't cut all of that in one go. So I'm going to turn this over. So I've got the raw edge on the edge and just use the inside of my scissors to cut up to the stitch line at around about half an inch or one inch increments. Be careful not to cut through the stitches, but cut right up to them. And we will snip into this bit here. This is why I didn't sew all the way across there. And we'll carry on snipping across each one of these. And again, don't measure, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect as in the distance between the cuts, but around about half an inch is fine. So when this goes into the washing machine, this is then going to go fluffy. I'm not cutting too far up to the corner here, because remember I am going to be putting a backing on my cushion cover. 
but it's fun to see it happening and particularly because your fabric is cut on the um, on the weave it may fray as well um, fabric that's cut on the diagonal on a 45 degree or a bias cut doesn't tend to fray it goes fluffy if you try and make it fray but this may fray a little bit so just just be aware of that but that's absolutely fine the kind of the tattier these seams look the better they seem to work So that's how I'm going to leave that for now. And then we'll make up the back. Now for the back of this, I thought it might be fun, because again, the, you're not going to see that, that side, it's going to be on the inside of my cushion cover. Um, but I thought it might be quite fun to use some of the spare squares that I have to make up a back, which is a little bit patchwork. So this time, again, I'm going to take my nine pieces. Just move that out of the way for now and arrange them so that I don't get two together. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now the zip in this one isn't going to be central um, because I want to actually put the zip into one of the seams here. So it's going to be to one side. Um, so what I'm going to do is to sew these together in a row of three and then a row of three, and then a row of three, and then these two rows together. So my zip is actually going to go down here. Um, and that's going to keep all the squares nice and uniform. I think it'll look neater to do it that way from the back. So I'm going to keep these in this formation and start to sew them all together. So again, right sides together with this one, unlike with the outside, or the, the front, sorry, of the, um, the bag bag of the cushion cover which was um, wrong sides together and I'm using that half inch seam allowance so it's the same seam allowance as the front so we'll have two together here and then these two together and then the final one of these two rows and then I'm going to press these and I'll show you why. Let's just line those edges up together. If you do find you want to pin this, that's fine. I'm not worried with something of this kind of size. Okay, then let's take my ironing mat and I'm going to press these seams in one direction. this seam in the opposite direction and this seam back in this direction and by alternating the way that the the seams are facing means when i pop these two pieces together i can kind of nest them and it means that the points are going to match very easily when you sew these two pieces together. So again, if you wanted to put a pin right in the center there to hold those points, I'm not too worried, to be honest. I'm not too fussed about points matching up perfectly. If it's a lot of effort to do that, then don't worry. But this is a really easy way of matching the points. Like so. And then when we take the final piece here, again, you lay these two pieces together with the seams in opposite directions and the point just matches. It kind of butts up against itself and it's a very easy way when you're sewing squares together of just matching up the points. Perfect. And then I'll sew these three pieces together and then we'll put the zip in. So my zip, as usual, 
is way too long and I know I've said before but there, there is a reason that I do that um, if I've got a very long zip I can always chop it down to the length that I like if I've got a shorter zip I can't make it any longer and the cost of a longer zip is minuscule compared to the cost of something that's half the length but it also means if I've got an unusual length if I want a zip that's 13 and a half inches or 42 centimeters I can cut it to the exact size that I want it to be instead of worrying about having to go out there or find something online that is exactly the right size so that's why my zips are always too long so what I'm going to do here is to fold the two edges right sides together I've still got that nice nesting thing going on with the seams, I'll in one direction. And I am going to hold that just with a, a couple of pins down here. And then I'm going to figure out where I want my zip to go. So I'm going to chop off the stoppers at the end. Another reason I, I like long zips, um, not if I'm dressmaking, these are going to stay exactly where they are, but making cushion covers, I don't want the needle to hit these as I'm sewing, they're metal. So off they go, and I'm going to fit the zip to about an inch, maybe two and a half centimeters from each end. So let's chop that off. I'll need my mark a pen and I'm going to mark just half an inch or about a centimetre from the end of the zip and I'm going to sew with my half inch centimetre seam allowance up to this line back stitch then lengthen my stitch to a tacking or a basting stitch because these stitches will be undone and sew to the next line back stitch and then back to my regular stitch length So my regular stitch length happens to be 2.4. On my main sewing machine, it's 2.2, um, it's so it doesn't really matter. Back stitch when I come to that line. Then I'm going to go right up to the longest stitch length on my machine, which is a five, and carry on sewing. Just trying to match those seams. I'm not too worried about seams being perfect, to be honest. It's the back of a cushion cover, but nice if it works, isn't it? And then back stitch, back to my normal stitch length, and stitch to the end. So I'm just switching my iron on. Bring up the mat. I can take my pins out now. And then let's open up this seam. So we'll press that open. I have used a, a heat erasable marking tool, so that has now disappeared. Just to make you aware. Oh, I should have I should have made that go in the same direction. Not not to worry about that. And then I'm going to place my zip over that seam. Now I always tack or baste my zips in place first. Um, this is entirely up to you which way you do that. I find it easier to sew in a zip with a tacking basting stitch or a tacking basting glue stick than pins because the zip can still move no matter how well you pin it. So I'm going to use a glue stick and these are designed for fabric, by the way. This is a sew line glue stick. We have these on the website. Um, and that's really important. Please don't use anything that um, is designed for paper when you're using fabric. These sticks, although they're bright blue, they come in lots of different colors. They dry clear. But if you do happen to get glue onto your fabric, it washes out. And because they're designed for fabric, they're not going to gunge up your sewing machine needle as you're using them. So a generous splurge of glue along there. And then I'm going to lay this with the teeth or the coil facing downwards right over the seam that I've just made. So it's important that the teeth are sitting on top of the seam. And just bring those together. I've got the zip slightly open and I'm just bringing those teeth together at the end. So just leave that for a few seconds if you are using glue. 
just to really stick to the fabric. And then I'm going to sew from this side because this is the side that you see. So I'm actually going to start just to one side of the zip and again as previous I'm going to move my um, needle over I say as previous I'm going to move my needle over so I don't need to put the zipper foot on my sewing machine I don't very often to be honest use use the zipper foot um, by having this facility I've been able to move that needle over which most um, computerized sewing machines do have that feature if you look at the stitch width because um, a straight stitch doesn't actually have a width you can swing the needle from one side to the other and I find if I move the needle over I don't need to put the presser foot on because the needle's in the right position so very rarely do I use a, um, a zipper foot oops let's go to this one so I'm just going to sew a straight line down here I can actually feel where the end of the zip's going to be but if you wanted to retransfer those markings, and in fact, if you stretch this open a little bit, you can see where the long tacking stitches are. So when I come to the end of those, let's go across the bottom of the zip and then sew down the opposite side. And I'm starting at the bottom of the zip and there is a reason for that because now I'm coming to the zip slider and I've got a lump that's going to be quite difficult to sew around. So what I'm going to do here is to take my quick and pick and I'm simply going to undo some of those long stitches over the zip teeth or coil and over the zip pull so I can then hook this up and move it out of the way. Let's lift that zipper foot, uh, the presser foot up. And then I'll carry on sewing to the end of where my tacking stitches were, which is here. Move across and back down the opposite side. And again, when I get to the zip pull, because I've undone some of the stitches. I can just move that out of the way and carry on sewing. So I'll have a nice neat box shape around my zip and then I'll take my quick unpick or my seam rip or whatever you call them and just unpick carefully the rest of the stitches over the zip. and up to this side and you will be left with lots of little bits of thread which is actually very satisfying to pull off or shake off but we'll do that later so now I'm going to take my whoops the front of my um, cushion cover and I'm going to sew this wrong sides together, which again seems very alien, to the back of my cushion cover. Now I'm using, as I said before, a flannel fabric, which is quite grippy, it does kind of stick to itself. So I may not need to pin that too much. Let's line that up. And I'm doing this wrong sides together because I'm going to fringe around the outside of both pieces, just like I did on the front. So if you are going to pin, you need a nice long one so you can get through all of those layers of fabric and you can actually see where the pins are as well. So I like these flower heads, they're flower heads and button heads, same kind of thing, but they're, they're nice and long so it's easy to go through lots of layers. And then I'm going to sew all the way around the edge with that half an inch seam allowance. There's a lot of fabric going on here now. So if you, I mean, your walking foot, as I said previously, would be ideal. Um, you may find that a denim needle is useful. A denim needle is a strong needle, so it's not just for denim. It's for multiple layers, which you have here. Because I'm actually sewing through five, six layers of fabric now. 
So again, let's just keep sewing all the way around. Another thing you may find you want to do is to increase your stitch length. Sometimes with lots of layers of fabric like this, the friction can slow down your sewing machine somewhat. And another tip, if you have a presser foot pressure dial on your sewing machine, you may want to lessen the pressure a little bit because you've got such a thickness of fabric that you're sewing through. So let's go into the corners. Again, my, my fabric isn't 100% lining up perfectly. By the time these edges have been washed and ragged, you're not going to notice that. Now just a couple of more sides to go here. Over those lumpy bits, there's a lot more than six layers in those seams. Into the corner. And then back down. Then we'll have these pins out. So no turning through. It doesn't matter whether the zip's open or closed as you're sewing this bit. Love picking these off. Tweezers would help. Well, actually, if you have one of those um, lint rollers, like the sticky rollers that you get dust off your, your clothes with, that's a good way of removing all those tiny pieces also. So let me just slip off the longer threads, turn that over. And then just like I did before, I'm going to let's cut into the diagonal here. I'm going to snip at half inch or about a centimeter increments all the way around the edge. And then this needs to go into the washing machine. You can encourage this fluffing up a little bit if you like by using um, a soft scrubbing brush and that'll encourage kind of the fraying and the fluffiness to happen. But after this has been in the sewing machine, it's going to just look so, so different and so fluffy and it's going to be incredibly soft. And this is how it looks when it's all washed. Now this is one wash and it was a quick wash. The more you wash, the fluffier and the softer this is going to be. And you can see on the back, I've got that nice neat finish with the zip that's just inside uh, or just in between the two sets of squares. So it's not very noticeable. If you wanted to make this any bigger, then you just carry on adding the squares. And if you wanted to use larger squares, then of course that's fine as well. And try different types of fabric. Try this in an old soft denim, an old pair of jeans. Um, any kind of woven fabric, so any kind of cotton is going to to be absolutely fine. Don't use a non-woven fabric like felt because that's just not going to fray and it's not going to fluff up even though it might be nice and soft. So I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and I hope you enjoy snuggling up to yours. I shall see you again soon. Bye bye.